Hi there, we're going to be creating an F1 in schools car from a standard balsa block. And it looks a little bit like this beastie here. And that's the completed car that you saw just before. Now the maximum dimensions that your car can be is 210 millimeters, and the minimum is 170 millimeters. So keep that in mind when you're designing your car. Plus, you need to be aware of the diameter of the wheels that you're going to use because the minimum ground clearance that you can have is three millimeters from the bottom of the car to the ground. So that needs to be featured and factored in when you're designing your car. Okay, so here's the bolster block and it's um, ready to go. Now I've done, because it takes a little bit of a while, I've done some things for you already. So what we've done is begun to sketch on the side face of this block and extrude through. So my first extrusion is looks like look like this. And they were, I set up the two holes, measured the distances so that I could drill two holes for my axles. They're six millimeter holes, and you can drill them earlier or later in the piece if you want, it doesn't matter when, but they have to be in the right spot. You can move them if you need to move them. Um, once I did my axles, I made them 40 millimeters from either end of my block, and I decided to make my block um, in my car 180 millimeters. So there it is there. So I set up this profile using a spline. I'll show how you show you how to do that in just a minute. And I extruded out the shape. You can see the, the side profile of the car. And then I did a similar thing for the end of the car down here. And now I'll do one more for you so you can see what it looks like uh, when I do a little bit of extrusion on the back of the car to lift the back of the car up. So I'll start on the sketch on that face, and if it drags out of your way, you can just use that centering button, or even use the hand, the dragging hand over there. All right. So choosing a line and a spline, I'm going to choose a spline, a control vertex spline, and you'll see how that works in a minute. Try not to get too close to the canister edge, because you'll find that. Uh, and this little button, you can drag and pull them away. It's very annoying. It's one of the most annoying things of just keeps on getting in your way of Inventor here, as good a program as it is. Alright, so I'm hovering over the edge. I'll click OK for that, and then looking here at, at the drawing that we've just created, you're going to be able to see how it's moved about. I'm middle mouse button to scroll. So by holding on, holding on to these little reference points we can drag the curve out and shape it the way we want to shape it and you know I'm going to push it in a little bit maybe a bit like that okay so I created a spline shape it's the same way I did all the other splines and I'm now going to create a bounded shape that I can use to extrude out of the way so still in the same sketch I'm going to use a straight line and begin from uh, snapping to the point where my spline started to the edge of the block and then to the final point where that spline started. Now sometimes you go across, it doesn't appear to, Inventor doesn't appear to continue your line like a chain line, so that might be a setting that needs to be fixed. Um, but just make sure that you've got that line sitting there, that second line that you want. If you finish the sketch you should be able to see it. So there it is, it's highlighted in dark blue. So now, if I hit the extrude button, I should have a straight that can be extruded. Now, and so it is. It's pointing in the wrong direction. If I click on this button here, the extrusion will go through. It specifies distance. I want it to be um, all the way through to the other side of the block. And I click OK. So now, and that's how I did the other shapes that you can see over here. I've created this profile of the car, and I've got my axle holes. I think what I might do now is look at creating a vertical shape to be able to give my car some more some more of the shape that I want. So I can do that in a few ways and you need to sketch on a plane. Um, I've got this horizontal plane that I can use over here if I wanted to or I could actually even select the bottom face by moving the object around. I might be able to select the bottom face over here and draw the shape that I want. Now um, we can do this here um, I'm going to decide to, I think what I might do actually is, I'll bring up the right hand side face 
and we'll build in some wheel arches or some wheel holds. So again a sketch, I select the face that I want to draw on, then I hit the sketch button and of course I'm getting this in the wrong setting that I don't like. I want it quite over here so I can see what's going on. And I'll draw a circle and this time I'll select the center point of my circle and draw outwards and create another circle on this face which I'm going to make 34 millimeters. And why 34? Because the standard plastic wheels are 32. I leave a millimeter clearance on either side and I'll do the same over here. I'm trying to leave that millimeter clearance on either side. My dimensioning is not 100% here now, so we'll make that 34 as well. And I'll click Finish Sketch, so both of those wheel arches are set up, they're both at 34. And now I'm going to do some extruding. I'm going to click on the Extrude button, I'm going to click on that face, click on that one as well. And I want them to go inwards rather than outwards, so I'll move this around so I can get a bit of a picture of where that is. Um, remove material, I want it to cut away, so I'm clicking on the cut away. And I know the wheels are 16 millimeters thick, so I'm going to choose to make the distance that they extrude inwards 17 millimeters. There we go. And that's gone in by 17 millimeters. Now that's all very well and good on this side, but I can mirror the same features on the other side by using the mirror tool. Um, so I'm happy with that. That looks all looking good. And somewhere floating about here, I'll find the mirror tool. There it is under Sketch tab. So I'll create another sketch. This time on this plane. Is that a 2D sketch? And I want to mirror. But what I really want to mirror is a feature. Which feature? Well, the feature will be the one that we've just, extrusion that we've just done, extrusion 13. Next thing you know, that I'll be asked what is the what is the the mirror plane that I want to mirror about. So I've got to have an axis or a mirror plane to do that about. And the mirror plane that I'm going to choose will be this central plane here. So I click mirror line, select the mirror line, and I want it to be there, but it's not going to be happily received me. I suspect because uh, I haven't chosen the correct extrusion. So I'll get out of this and I'll finish the sketch and I'll go into the feature here edit the uh, feature. Oh, looks pretty okay. I'm happy with the feature. Um, I really need to get the mirror stopped from being greyed out. So we will go to mirror here and select mirror pane and it's this plane here which is what we want. Features, or we may need to select the features first. If we select the features, we make them extrusion 13 as the feature. There it is, extrusion 13. The mirror plane has been selected already. I think we've picked it before, and they've already the features have been set up as being mirrored. If I click OK, those mirror features will be completed. And there they are. And I'll grab the spin button to show you. So there they are. Okay, so that's the first part of the car. Now the next section of the car will be to extrude out around the back section to create a back profile. Then I might stop this video and we'll continue it again a bit further on with some more detail. Alright, so let's just finish this last section which is the back. I'll look at it from the back. This sketch plane, we'll start a sketch here. And now I'm going to want to create another profile. So I'm going to use a circle 
here and create external circle it's about 25 millimeters let's hit 25 and click enter well I'll tell you what I, I might even decide to change that I might create an ellipse instead just for something a little bit different I've got a bit of a plan a bit of an idea of why I wanted to do that so let's let's give this a go I'll, I'll go back on this feature here that I've just created Z, take it out of the way, and let's select an ellipse. So, ellipse has a minor and a major axis. I'm going to select that as a center point, and I'm going to select up here as. I'm going to just spin this a little bit for a bit of a quick look. No, I'm going to have to pick my ellipse first. Okay, let's just do that. Pick the ellipse. Stretch the ellipse out, and I want it to be again three and a half millimeters thickness. So I'll go with that. Now I'll see if I can get my spin center and see. Yeah, I chose correctly. I want the tip of the ellipse to just be above that curved surface that's behind it. All right, okay. I'll get out of the spin center. Now I'm going to create a, a, the rest of my profile. So I'll continue with the line tool and create. so I can see it a bit better and uh, come on there we go oops I'll just take that out of that select the line tool and create a square box around which I can start to do some trimming the one I want to create my extrusion okay so let's do the trimming here now I can use the trim tool up top here put it in the center and get rid of this here get rid of that there and by now I should have I should be able to do my extruding. So let's have a look. So I've got a bounded shape all the way across the top here and around through there. So a quick finish sketch. And I'll see what happens if I want to do some extruding now, 3D model. Yeah, I can extrude that shape, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to be able to extrude it. And I want to be able to extrude it in the opposite direction, going inwards but for a distance of 180 millimeters because I don't want it to go all the way um, and I want it to remove material that's another thing I want it to do so not to build but to remove so let's see what happens now if we click OK alright something's happened ok so there you go looks like I've gone a bit too far and extruded up into the block a little bit I can fix that up, but I've got this now elliptical shape that's been extruded. That's all looking pretty good, so I'm fairly happy with that. And I might leave this part of the video here, and we'll continue on next time, and I'll show you a bit about some more modifications that we can make to make this a bit more interesting and useful, and creating, including um, rear airfoils or rear wings. Okay, so I'll leave it there for the moment.